Alright, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this HP laptop. This is a model 17T-CN000. Alright, so first thing we're going to do is remove these rubber pieces here. Okay, I just used my fingernail, but you can use whatever works to help you get underneath. And we're going to peel these up, just like that. Okay, this one had some liquid spilled in it, so we got to see what's going on. Let's also remove these just in case. Yep, there are screws under here as well. Okay. All right, we're going to use a PH1 or JS1 screwdriver to remove all the screws from the bottom. You want to keep the screws in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that is I put them flat side down like this on my desk in the pattern I remove them. All right, so basically you have four, two, and then I'll just put these four in a row as well. All right. If this video helps you out, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. If it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Alright, so let's go ahead and continue getting all these screws out. Okay. Hopefully this is the only screwdriver we'll need, but sometimes um, they like to switch around. So let's see. Okay, now that we've got all the screws out, we're going to open this up a bit. Okay, and then what you want to do is in this uh, gap here, I use my fingernails. Okay, so I get in there and I use my thumbs on the back to push and pop it open like that. Okay, just like that, going all around. Okay, now that we've got part of it open, we can kind of close it up. And we're just going to go all the way around the computer like this. Okay, rotate it and go to the other side. Make sure you get all of it out. Okay, I guess this side didn't come out completely. There we go. Okay, once you get all the sides on the front out, you can see it kind of opens up and wiggles like this. Okay, so the bottom cover is going to come out separately and the top is going to stay attached. So we have to figure out why is this side not coming out. Um, let's carefully open this up. Um, okay, we can somewhat get in these edges, but not really. Hmm. Okay, this, this part's going to be tough. I'm not sure how we're going to get this out. We might have to just continue wiggling it a bit and eventually it might pop out. Okay, let's continue pulling here a little bit. Oh, there we go. Okay, I have to get my fingernails in this little gap here. And there we go. Okay. So now we got all of it except for this. Probably can just wiggle this a little bit. And there we go. Okay, we got the bottom cover off. Um, so far, oh, there's a little water in here. Nothing too bad. Let's dry that off. Oh no, that means it's on this side. Oh yeah, there's water in there. Okay, so we're gonna have to dry this all up. First thing you wanna do when it comes to water damage or liquid, you wanna disconnect the battery, okay? So let's go ahead and remove the battery here. The battery model is right there, HW03XL. Okay, again, keep all the screws in order. Okay. All right, now let's go ahead and pop the battery up just like this underneath. And battery's out, okay. And there you go. HW03XL, you got this HP spare part number, L97300-005. Set that aside. Okay, and as you can see, there's some water in here on this USB port, so we're going to clean that up. We're going to have to take this whole thing apart and make sure there's no water trapped underneath. Oh no, this doesn't look good. There's actually some area of the board here that's fried as you can see 
Um, we're going to try and clean it up and hopefully it's just uh, shorted temporarily and not completely toast. <clears throat> Let's see. We got the USB 3.0 SD card slot here separate from the rest. Um, is this a giant speaker or is this just a piece of plastic? Interesting. There's a bunch of like random pieces of plastic here that aren't doing anything. It seems you got a two and a half inch SATA hard drive here. <clears throat> the wireless card connector for the DC jack charge port. Interesting. They run the wire so far away. Um, you got this wire for that board here. Hard drive. This is for a fingerprint sensor on some models. This flips up and you can like all these other connectors. They have a little latch that flips up. Then you got the um, touchpad finger uh, touchpad or uh, trackpad here. <clears throat> it is removable. It looks like three screws and three screws down here to hold the thing in place. Keyboard connector here. Um, I'm not sure what this is for. Possibly a keyboard uh, backlight. They don't label this one, so I'm not sure. Um, what else? They have a. Uh, PCIe, no, they have an M.2 SSD slot here. I'm guessing it supports PCIe NVMe, but not 100% sure. And then you got the two sticks of RAM. We'll pop this open. Okay, and here you can see <clears throat> PC4 3200AA. Uh, the RAM doesn't seem to be damaged or anything by the liquid, so hopefully it's okay. Um, we are just going to leave it out though, all right? And if you didn't see how I removed the RAM the first time, you pull these two metal tabs away from the stick of RAM, and it's supposed to pop up like that, and then you just pull it out. All right, this doesn't look like it got any liquid damage, so we'll just leave that there. Okay, CPU is soldered to the motherboard, and there is no GPU. It's an integrated GPU, but some models looks like they would have a GPU, and it would go right there. You can see where they have these little spots where the things would go. All right. Anyways, we're going to have to disconnect everything so that we can um, um, pull the motherboard out. But first thing we're going to have to do is open up the computer carefully, carefully. Okay. And then we're going to press and hold the power button here for 15 seconds to drain any residual power. This makes it a lot safer to work on, especially if you're going to be removing the LCD or LVDS connector. Okay. So we'll hold this for about another 10 seconds or so. <clears throat> All right, we should be good. Let's go ahead and carefully close this because now we have less screws holding the hinges in place. All right, and let's start just disconnecting everything and see what we got. All right, actually, I don't think I got a proper thumbnail. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, let's just get a thumbnail maybe right here, okay? Stop waiting. There we go. Okay, good enough. Let's go ahead now and start taking this whole thing apart. I'm going to zoom in. We're going to disconnect the DC jack charge port connector. Just grab the wings, wiggle it with your fingers like that, and it pops out. Okay wireless card there's a little piece of plastic tape stuff here for some reason so we're going to get underneath undo the screw wireless card pops up okay and then you can pull it out at an angle i'm going to leave the screw here because i'm leaving the wireless card attached Okay, we're going to disconnect this cable here, flip that latch up, and then we can pull this back. Usually it's good to pull by this little blue tab, but this tab is too short, so it makes it difficult. But there we go, we got it. Okay, next we're going to remove the hard drive. Actually, let me zoom out for this. Okay, so same thing, flip this latch up. And then you can go ahead and pull this cable out. Be very careful with it. You don't want to damage or crease it or anything. All right. And then to remove this, it looks like it just comes straight up. So if you wanted to replace the hard drive, um, looks like there's no screws either. So you can actually just pop these things off. Yep. You just wiggle it and pull it out. Okay. Just like this. It flops out with the whole plastic stuff as well. And you can transfer this over to any 2.5 inch SATA hard drive or SSD. Um, and then as far as removing this, 
I just use my fingernail in there between the gaps and I pop this a little. All right, and there you go. And then you can do the same thing with the other side, pop it a little. Once you get it popped out a little on both sides, you can grab this and you should be able to get it out. If not, you can also go in here and you can do that. All right. And the reason I do that is because sometimes when you pull on here, you end up separating the layers here, that black layer from this gray one. And yeah, you don't want to do that. Okay. All right. So we'll set the hard drive aside as well. Next thing we got, let me set this aside somewhere safe. Okay. What else we got? We got the trackpad connector here. Let's zoom in a bit. <clears throat> Flip this latch. Disconnect this. Okay. Keyboard connector here. Flip this latch up. And disconnect this. Usually you have to lift it up slightly because the wings get caught on these little raised areas there. So you got to pull it up slightly and pull it back. There we go. <clears throat> what else? Okay, we got the LCD LVDS connector here. Flip that latch up. Actually, this says webcam for some reason. <clears throat> I guess that means it does both. EDP. I don't know what that means. Display port, maybe? <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, we're going to peel this up. All right, speaker connector over here. We're going to use our fingernail and just wiggle that connector, and eventually it will pop out. There we go, just like that. Okay, the speaker, is the speaker on top of the motherboard at all? Not really. <clears throat> all right, let's start removing motherboard screws and see if we can pop the motherboard out or if we're gonna have to start removing other things. <coughs> Excuse me, all right. So, we're gonna remove the three screws going down the side here. Again, keep them all in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. <clears throat> this screw here um, is a little bit wider, but also shorter. So if you mix it up, keep that in mind. All right, we got two screws, one up here and one down here. This bottom one is also another one of those wider uh, screws. Okay, we got another screw over here. Also another one of those wider ones. All right, and we got a screw holding this fan in here. Oh, we didn't remove the fan connector. We probably have to. So let's go ahead and remove that as well. Again, using my fingernails at the wings, just wiggle it and there you go, it pops out. Got another screw here holding the fan. Okay, that one's different. It's slightly longer and also a different color. Okay, it looks like the fan is probably going to come up with this entire plastic piece. Actually, one more screw here holding the fan. Okay. Okay, let's see if it comes up now. Okay, the fan comes out separately. As you can see, so if you need to replace the fan, um, it does have this model number here, but usually you can just search the laptop model number and fan and you'll be able to find it. Okay, is there another model number here somewhere? I don't know what, I don't know which one's the correct model number. I think it's that DFSSK something. There you go. Oh, it's S5, sorry, DFS5K. One two three zero four three six three P. There you go. Okay, I'm gonna set the fan aside. All right. Okay, let's see. Can we pop this out now? It looks like it. Okay, so motherboard is slightly coming up. You want to be very careful, gentle with lifting this in case something is caught, which it seems like it might be caught on this speaker. Here. So let's see if we can pop this speaker up actually. Okay, so we're gonna pull this up. Um, speaker is somewhat stuck here, it seems. Hmm. I don't know. The speaker's stuck in there, so 
I don't know. We can't really get that out. So can we lift this side? Okay, maybe we just have to lift from this side first. Okay, let's zoom out a tiny bit more. Okay. Like this. All right. And then we'll kind of pull it forward towards us. Looks like it's kind of working. There we go. Pulling it towards me. And there we go. All right. Be careful with all the connections over there. And we got the motherboard out. The bottom. Oh, there's a little water, but not much. I'm going to clean this up. We're going to try and just brush the corrosion away and hopefully that'll fix it because if not, the motherboard has some fried components and that's going to be something I don't repair. I'm going to have to ask my partner to see if they can, but uh, let's at least try and clean off any corrosion we see. Okay. I'm going to have to dry out the ports. I'll use my electric air blower because it's a lot more powerful. But uh, doing that did push some water out. Okay. But yeah, the main, the main one I'm worried about is over here. I don't know if you can see that. It's all like burnt, especially that brown spot there. Usually when it gets burnt like that, we're gonna have we're not gonna have a good time but uh let's see all right and the rest um only slight stuff I don't see anything too bad it's just mainly all in this area okay so anyways um, I'm gonna take this out I'm gonna clean it up real quick using my electric air blower and scrubbing it a bit more and we'll be back um, it looks like the rest of this stuff is just plastic doesn't really need to be removed it's not attached actually um, this speaker attaches over here so this is a speaker but this thing is just plastic it looks like it's not doing anything okay so I'm gonna take this out clean up and I'll see you guys in a bit all right so I'm back um, here you can see the difference all right so I clean that off there's no more of that burnt thing Hopefully um, it was just shorted here and it didn't have like one of these little components there that burnt and fried off Because if those things burnt off then likely we're not going to be able to have it working Oh, this one looks pretty bad. I have to see if I can clean that up as well um, I didn't notice that earlier, but Let's see if I can show this better here Yeah the feet on that they're all like shorted together so I'm gonna have to see if I can clean that up but before this was that burnt area so I don't know if it had one of those little things on it that got burnt but uh let's see if I can clean this piece up all right I'll be back all right well I cleaned it the best I can but as you can see it looks like those feet got pretty much roasted off so likely this isn't going to work. Um, it's probably going to need a replacement of this chip. And if there were little things on there, like capacitors or something, then those are going to need to be replaced as well, assuming those are the only issues. Um, but yeah. Anyways, let's go ahead and reassemble it and see if we might be lucky. Sometimes we might and it might work anyway. So we'll see. All right, let's get this thing back together. Okay, so we're going to have to go in at an angle like this. Make sure these cables are up out of the way. Okay, wiggle that into place. All right, all these cables in the front, you want to make sure that they are out of the way. Wireless card, make sure it ends up back on top. All these other little cables, make sure they're on top. Okay, as we slowly lower this down, there we go, okay, make sure that goes in, oh, and there we go, it drops in pretty easily. Alright, <clears throat> let's go ahead and get all this stuff back together. So we're going to get the fan, and if you're wondering if you're replacing the fan, make sure you get these why isn't it focusing? There you go. 
make sure you get it with the exposed pin side up. You don't want to have the connector upside down where it's just all plastic, okay? So we'll drop this in. Okay, get the connector lined up. Make sure it's lined up and then pinch the two together just like that. Okay, let's get these screws in. And usually I'll loosely fit the screw first before, um, just to make sure all the screws are lined up. And then I'll kind of hold it in place and tighten it down. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna take the wireless screw out. Alright, let's go ahead and put it in at an angle here. Okay, and then we'll tape that down. <clears throat> Let me actually zoom in a bit here for you guys because you're probably not able to see what I'm doing. All right, make sure that latches up. Be careful not to crease this, not even the edges, okay? I'm gonna get this up, tilt it into place. All right, good. And then hold that in. Flip the latch down by sliding your finger over it, good. And we're going to get the DC jack charge port connector in. Make sure it's lined up and pinch it into place. All right, there we go. Let's get the hard drive. <clears throat> okay, hard drive, you just drop it back in this place. All right, I mean, it should be straightforward. You don't need to really see that. Make sure this latches up. Get this cable. It helps to hold the blue tab. And then just line that up and get that in. I know my hand's going to be in the way. It's in the way for me too. Okay. But basically just get it lined up. Into place. And then again slide your finger over the top to latch it down. <clears throat> Alright. Touch pad. Same thing. Get that in. Latch it down. Keyboard. Same thing. Get that in. Alright, kind of wiggle it a little bit. And latch it down. Yeah. Oh. There we go. Okay, what else? Got the LCD LVDS connector. Again, make sure that latches up. Get that in. Okay, latch that down. You want to make sure this cable is in all the way because if this is loose and the computer turns on, you can fry something. Okay. And then you got the speaker connections over here. Get that lined up. Move this cable out of the way. And make sure you have it facing up the right way with the solid plastic on top. And then pinch that into place. There we go. All right, let's get all the screws back in. Actually, we'll do the RAM and then we'll get all the screws, okay? So RAM goes in at an angle, just like the wireless card, and then down. Same thing, in and down. Okay, <clears throat> let's go ahead and get all these screws back in. This one. This one, and we got this one. And the last one here. Then we got the battery. <clears throat> um, as I can see, there's no CMOS battery, so most likely the 
<coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> the main battery. This acts as the CMOS or BIOS battery, RTC real time clock battery. Okay, so there is no separate battery for the BIOS. Make sure that's pushed down into place. <clears throat> excuse me. And we'll get all these screws back in. And we're going to power it up and hope it still works. Oh, there's some water down here as well. Oh, God. I didn't even notice that. It looks like actually most of the water is at the bottom. I didn't even see this. Oh, there's a lot of water up down here. Okay, make sure that's all dried up because I don't want that water moving around inside afterwards. Okay. Okay, I think we got it all. Oh, it's like splashing out now. Okay. Should be good. <clears throat> Alright, now that we got all of that done, let's see if it'll power it on. Sometimes we have to plug it back in for it to power on, but let's see. We're going to carefully open it up. And we'll push the power button. I see the power button light is on. So hopefully that means we're, it's going to power up properly. We'll find out. And again, because the battery was removed, um, even if the motherboard isn't, if the motherboard isn't dead, it's going to take a while to power up. But in this case, we might be dealing with a dead motherboard, but we'll see. We're going to let it run for a bit. Sometimes, because we removed the CMOS BIOS battery, um, it's basically resetting the BIOS, and it will take a while to boot up. But if it doesn't boot up at all, um, then likely the motherboard is toast. So we'll give it a bit longer, and we'll see. But uh, so far, it's not looking good. Not seeing anything on the screen at all. No signs of life except for the power button. So, yeah, I think it's fried. <clears throat> that sucks. <clears throat> Fan's not spinning either. Oh, fan's trying to spin. It like twitched a little. The fan is like twitching a tiny bit, but nothing. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything on the screen, so I think it's toast. Nothing's happening here. The fan just randomly keeps twitching. I'll let you see it. Yeah, the fan's just randomly twitching, but nothing's coming on the screen. Sadly, it seems like the motherboard is toast. Yeah, still nothing. It shouldn't take that long. So I'm going to force shut this off. And I'm going to pull this um, stick of RAM out just in case it's a RAM issue because this RAM was closest to the liquid spill. If they're lucky, maybe that's also part of the problem. So let's see. Let's power it up again. I doubt that's the issue, but uh, we'll find out. Yeah, nothing's happening. So, sadly, it does seem like the motherboard is toast. <clears throat> Let's just go ahead and put this thing back together. 
and I'll let the customer know, see what they want to do, if we can somehow find a donor motherboard or a replacement motherboard. Uh, sometimes we can find motherboards that aren't working, but we can pull off the pieces that are needed um, and see if that will fix it, but not always, so we'll see. All right, let's go ahead and get this thing back together. <clears throat> So we'll get this bottom cover back on. Oops, don't need to zoom out so far. So it's so wobbly. Okay. So we're just gonna line all of this back up. Okay, click all of this back into place. Click everything back into place. Okay, there we go. Make sure everything is clicked down. Good. Did I leave some screws out? I have a couple screws that... Wait, where'd these two screws come from? Did I not put back all the screws? Oh, I gotta pop this open again. screws that I didn't put back or something. Okay. Okay. What screws did I not put back here? Oh, oops, I didn't put back the two upper screws for the battery here. Let's get those two screws back in. fan just wake up from doing that okay let's pop this back on get that all back in Good. all right make sure everything is clicked into place Okay, and let's get all the screws back and we should be good to go. <clears throat> Hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, again, please make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others. Stop refreshing so much. <clears throat> like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. If it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Other than that, thanks for watching. <clears throat> And you're welcome to stay as I put back the rest of the screws and the rubber pieces. But that's pretty much all there is to it. Alright. Last few screws. One. All right, that's it. Let's get these rubber feet in. Just get it lined up. And go along. There we go. And the last one here. There we go. All right, and that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching. See you all in the next one. All right. I'll try powering it up one more time, but uh, I'm pretty sure nothing's going to happen. <clears throat> Thanks for watching, and bye. Let's drop this.